Hello viewers, here we are today at Titan Machine Tool. Long time since I posted a video, very sorry about that. I think about doing them every day, but just can't manage to squeeze them in. But we got one today. So I got these parts here, Cold World Steel 1018. Gotta do a whole bunch of them. So I got this inside bore feature in here. Got them all done to this point. I got them all face to length. I held the overall length plus or minus one or two. We got this bore here. It's 1.625 plus five minus nothing. And then 780 plus five minus nothing. Drill point, no particular angle, no particular depth, not critical. So I ran these bores probably on the mean of the high, so 1.625, so I did them like 1.627 and a half, maybe a little strong, 628. Same with the 780, 782 and a half, 783. I had a plug gauge, I'd bar them in the lathe, check them with the plug gauge before I take them out. Plug gauge goes nice, take them out, rinse and repeat. So now I have to drill and tap four, five, sixteenths holes on the outside periphery of the stock, the two and a half inch diameter material. So I have some other features that have to be timed to those tapped holes. So I'm not tapping them yet. I'm just reaming them. Tap drill size for a five sixteenths, 18, five sixteenths, 18 tap drill size is 257. That's a letter F drill. I bought a reamer 257 and a half. And I have some 257 drill blanks that I'm using to line these guys up. Because like I said, I have other features on these parts. And the other features are 45 degrees off from the tapped holes. So I'll show you what I got going on for this setup here right now. So how we're gonna do these things, how would I do these things? We got options, right? If I was doing one piece, if I was just gonna do one piece, you could do it in a V-block probably, you know, cause you'd have top hole, side hole, side hole. You just have to indicate it every time. One piece, no big deal, like I said, and then you'd still have this bottom one. How would you do that? I guess you could, you know, could come up with a bunch of ways to do that. But I got a bunch of them to do, so V-block is not a good option. I got this guy right here. This is what I was gonna originally use. I made a stop, I didn't have a stop. You know, there again, you, I could have dropped a, uh, if I was using it in an upright position instead of like this, 90 degrees, you could always drop a piece of material down in there and then bank that on it. But anyways, the datum is this surface here. So ordinarily, you do not wanna bank against the opposing surface when you got more than one piece. Now, like I said, I did hold the overall length plus or minus Two, maybe. But because I'm gonna locate off these holes in a fixture, I want them to repeat, every single one to repeat really well. So I chose to bank off this surface. So that would have been problematic with this thing right here. And besides, when you index, you know, this is I showed you before in another video, I can't do it one-handed here. But anyways, when you index thing, it, this thing runs out. So you sweep, the center, you put this guy on center, you know, you sweep this right here, which indicator, you index it, it's out. You'd have to sweep it again if you wanted to be really precise. You index it again, it's out. Not a lot, but more than what you want when you want to locate on these holes for later operations. You kind of want them to be really consistent. So I came up with this fixture. I made this little fixture thing here. Okay, that was also my plug gauge. So I turned that up. These diameters right there, like I said, those match the bore inside within, you know, a thou maybe, thou and a half or so. Like I said, we wanted 1.625 plus five minus nothing, 780 plus five minus nothing. So this thing is like 1.626 and a half. So for this to go, I'll be on the uh, 
1.625 plus all the time. And when I fit this thing, you could feel the air. It's like putting a dowel in a blind hole. You could feel the air, you gotta try to squeeze it out. So most of them, most of them are pretty good. I definitely have to have the parts nice and straight to load them on that plug. So that way I work off that center bore and I keep everything concentric to the center bore. So anyways, I turn this guy up. This right here is a 3 8 reamed hole through, okay? So now I made this vice jaw. I have another matching one. Like I said, I have to do um, hole features 45 degrees off from the tapped holes. So this was my first setup to do my tap drill holes. I have this thing sitting on a dowel. I'll show you another jar in a minute. So this can rotate on that center line. So it sits on a dowel, slip fit, okay? And then I have dowel holes here, here, here on that bolt circle. So that that way I can index this plug gauge fixture on the center line using the dowel holes to line it up, all right? So this is what the jaw looks like right here. This is another jaw, same thing. We got the 3 8 dowel right here, so the, the plug gauge rotates on that center line. And then I have these dowel holes right here that I can slip, that slip through the plug gauge to line it up. Then these guys are tapped holes, so I can screw it to it, all right? But this one, is 45 degrees off from the other one. You see, my dowels are over here on this one right here. 45 degrees off. So the bolt holes are here, the dowel holes are here, here. So I made two of them because like I said, I have to rotate this guy afterwards and do other features 45 degrees off from the holes. So I got this set up now to be able to do the holes, drill a hole, index it, I put a pin in here, I line it back up, I do the next hole, et cetera, et cetera. I have another video, you see me doing it. So now after I'm done doing all of those with the tap drill holes in them, 90 degrees apart, I'll take that plug gauge off, that fixture, and I'll put it on this guy, sit it on the center, and then I'll put the dowel pins in to realign the fixture and I'll bolt it back to the jaw, but it'll be 45 degrees off. So now when I drill them this way, straight up and down like it is now, when I put them on this guy, I'll be able to rotate these guys at 45 degrees and then be able to do my other features. Like right here, see? So when I'll have it like that, He's got to put a big saw cut through this thing right here. And then 90 degrees from the saw cut, I have a V-notch. So I don't just have one, I have two features there. And that's why I need to be able to index this piece relatively easily and has to be able to repeat. The setup has to repeat over and over and over again because I don't have a tool changer in a CNC. So I could load them guys in first, got, you know, and change tools and whatnot but I gotta be able to take them out and do each operation at a one time. So I'll load them in, do the holes on the exterior profile. I have my drill rod, 257, letter F, drill blank, M2 tool steel. So now these guys go right in there. That guy lines up in there, no problem. We got a, let's have a bar on this one. Screwing my video all up. Here. Look at that, it makes me look like a jackass. See, so these guys go in, yeah, there's a burr on that one right there. We'll have to take the burr off. But these guys go right through so then I can use these holes. You know, see, that one's got a hole. They go right through. And then I can use that, just like I did, to index this, to line them back up. I suppose I don't have to use that. I could use the same pin that I'm using on here, just like that. Boom, we'll put them in, line them up. So that's what we got going on here. All right, drilling them on this one. And like I said, those are 257 and a half reamed holes right there, 90 degrees apart. I made this all ahead of time, obviously. And then I just screw it to it, screw it to the vice jaw. 
homemade vase jaw, one inch, flat ground stock, low carbon flat ground stock. Reuse that over and over again. As you can see, we got some tap holes in there. It's sacrificial, it's not hard. But it's a nice piece of material to work with to be able to have a flat surface. Pretty nice to start with, so you're not working with a piece of crapola. So that's what we got there. Gonna screw it to it afterwards, and uh, when we go back to the next operations, when I do the saw cuts and the Vs, maybe I'll uh, I'll do the do a video for that if things go well. Alrighty, Titan Machine Tools signing off. Thank you for watching.